trying this thing on. Oh, here we go. Oh, dear. Okay, now we got a hair issue. We got that one hair. Okay, mess. See her right there. Anyway, good morning, ladies and germs. How are we doing this Saturday morning? Or whenever you're watching this. So, talk about the world turns. Made my stomach turn okay this week. <laughs> Where do we start? Okay, I'll start with the simple stuff. I'm not going to dissect everything. If I tried, we'll all end up puking. And I'm sure a few of us already have. So we're going to stay simple. Um, I'm going to concentrate today on simply the, how should I say, the, the little ring, the fiasco ring that, that Trump tried to set up. I'll explain. When someone is doing something illegal, they normally have two sets of books. One book they give to the to the IRS. You know, the books, I mean, they keep their receipts. The, that's the part, that's the one they keep to the, give to the IRS and all the numbers work out and everything looks good. And then they have the second set of books. The second set of books is all the receipts and all the numbers that are actually happening. Those books get burned at the end of the year because you don't want to buy symbols. Oh. Now, if you're wondering what the heck I'm talking about, uh, go watch the movie Studio 54. It tells you exactly what's going on. And you guys are paying by a good move. Well, anyway, what was going on is that obviously Trump was trying to set up a second line of command to, so that he can float certain issues without having to go through the proper channel. Oh, the proper channel was going to be there anyway. So it looked like it was functioning normally. But the real channels that he wanted to use was his own personal channel. Which, of course, when you're a public figure, which he hasn't figured out yet, <laughs> and that's a major no-no. So, we're going to start with the arrest that happened Thursday. It was so funny. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, to me it's funny, because of the way it happened. Okay, so you're at the D.C. airport, I think it's called... Dulce, Dulce, D-U-L-L-E-S. Dulce. Anyway, go look it up and pronounce it. It's real easy. Anyway, they're there. They got their uh, first class ticket to Frankfurt, Germany. Now, I don't know about you, but first class tickets are expensive. They're like $30,000 each. Or is that just on Emirates? Anyway, <laughs> it's expensive. Expensive. They both got first class. And the reason I think they get first class is because you're the first one to get on the plane. The first class tickets, I think, is actually handicapped, then first class, then business, then anyway, you don't need me to go through the whole thing. I'm geared off course. So there are these two fellas, um, Parnas, Parnas, Parnas. P A R N A S, yeah, pardon us. Uh, Fruman, F R U M A N. Okay, that's good. Here they are, they're saying, what, they're a little first class ticket, and they're like, okay, they're going to call us the board to see the plane first. So that normally someone went up to them and invited them to, you know, it's time to get on the plane. Only in the plane. Let's not get on the plane. We're not able to meet over here. <laughs> Certain people would get that joke. Anyway, um, so here they are, they're getting ready to board the plane, and two plane clothes came out and popped them and arrested them right there. Okay, that was interesting. And it turned out they were on their way, a one-way ticket to Frankfurt, so they're not coming back. Just a few hours ago, before they went to the airport, literally six hours. They were having lunch with Giuliani. Of 
Al-Qaeda in the news. Everyone knows that. Not a big deal. Now, this is where I start questioning things. Because I'm just that kind, kind of person. Why did the FBI or CIA or whoever was in charge of this allow Giuliani to get away and still be free? Because nothing is done by accident. Oh, if they were only been there a few hours. No. They know what they're doing. That was done on purpose. There is a reason why Giuliani is still walking around free and Tweedledee and Tweedledum are in jail. I think they want a million dollar bond or something. Uh, an historically, I mean, a enormously large bail is they're wanting for that, for those two. So, and what does Giuliani say? Oh, oh my God, that man has lost his ever-loving mind when he had left of it. They asked him about the Frankfurt plane tickets, and he was like, oh no, we were going to Vienna, Vienna, Austria, via Frankfurt. Germany? Now, first off, what he just did was throw Trump under the bus. But that's, uh, we'll get to that in a second. My question now, you know, on top of why did the FBI let him get away, is if I had a lawyer and they, he had three clients, me and two others, and the two others just got arrested, I'll be very nervous and getting another lawyer because that's not a good track record. Either that or everybody in this little kettle fish has been with something naughty. <laughs> I'm going with the naughty. So, why was the whole, why was the peanut gallery going off to the U, to Austria? Is it Austria? Yes. Vienna, excuse me. Yes. They're going to Vienna to Austria. Why was the whole peanut gallery going there? What is planted there? Well, I don't know if you've been noticing, but there's a, a, a billionaire, Ukrainian billionaire, named Dmitry Firtash, F-I-R-T-A-S-H, Firtash, Firtash. Anyway, you can look him up too. It turns out, <laughs> make it up nosy. It turns out that Nietzsche Firtash is a billionaire, Ukrainian billionaire, uber rich, uber rich, also very, very chummy chummy with Putin. Okay, so even when you go to Austria and you go to Ukraine, you still end up with a Putin. Pootie Poo's been a naughty, naughty boy, but we already knew that. Why is Vertash in in Vienna, Austria? Well, he can't leave. <laughs> you see, if you want to talk to uh, Vertash, you have to go to him. He doesn't do house calls. You got, hey, we need more papers, and he gives you papers. I'll explain that in a minute. Hi, Peanut. Oh. Why don't you get on the couch and let everyone see you instead of just barking? Huh? Peanuts being peanut again, guys. Sorry. So anyway, they were going to Vienna, Austria to visit with this Bertash fella. And the reason why is because he's the one that's been providing all the papers that Giuliani's been running around with, saying that Joe Biden's been doing this and Joe Biden's been doing that. It's from him. And it's like, you know, well, he used to be a, an official, former official of Ukraine. He had a position. That, <laughs> you see, he's under arrest. He's under house arrest. He's, um, the reason why he's under house arrest because the minute he steps foot out of that house, he's going to get arrested and extradited to face criminal charges. So he's got, he's got a real reason to stay there. So, now, my, 
my question is, is he making those painful allegations up? Is he taking, you know, the free cash fella? Is he just making it up? Is he taking some information and elaborating on, you know, certain points? So where is he getting that information from and how true is it? But keep in mind, he's in house arrest. He has every reason. Um, and what I'm trying to say is, I think he's trying to save his own man. Come on. So he has a reason to start this stuff. And what kept all this kettle of fish together is that the same people that represented Pranas and Fermat because Thursday morning they faced the court. Um, who was it? That, that court they were supposed to face to get, oh yeah, um, deliberation, the deliberation? Anyway, the impeachment trials. They were called in, they, they were represented, believe it or not, their lawyers were the same lawyer that represented Manafort. You'd think with him being in jail, he would keep his nose clean, but oh no, he's been having contact with Giuliani too as well. Holy ball. Okay. <laughs> so, this is all one big cluster. I'm still wondering, with all this going on, why is Giuliani allowed to walk free. Because the FBI, the CIA, they don't do mis they don't make mistakes like I said before. That happened on purpose. And I wanna know why. And I think we're all gonna find out why. Because no matter how much you try to hide it, the truth always comes out. This will come home to roost and we're gonna find out why. Um, what's starting to give me hope and what's starting to give me, uh, I see a light at the end of the tunnel is yesterday. Because the ambassador, the former ambassador to Ukraine, she testified yesterday for nine hours. Nine hours is a lot of information, people. Uh, she didn't come through the back door, she didn't come through the side door, she went on. She went in through the front door, she went across the Capitol ground, she went directly into the, the briefing room, the courtroom, and she gave her test, she gave her statement and gave, answered every question, and even though, uh, the, I think it was Pompeo that called her at 12.30 in the morning, gave her direct order not testify. The House of Representatives were already waiting on that. Oh, you come up here to join us. Come on, Peanut. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Anyway, they were already expecting that to happen, so they had the, the peanut cutter ready to go. <laughs> crazy fiasco. He always put my thumb. Anyway. So that's the whole cluster that's been going on this week. And by Giuliani saying on national TV that he is uh, he's Trump's lawyer. He's there. He's doing work for Trump. All he's done is literally throw Trump under the bus to save his own skin. I mean, you think that Trump throws anybody under the bus, that Giuliani's going to do this? I think every single person that is working in the White House, under this pumpkin head, is all out for themselves. And none of them know anything about any kind of loyalty at all. He gave peanuts. <laughs> 
So that was an interesting week. Um, they, Trump lost his appeal to not go with taxes. He lost the he lost the case of where he's trying to steal money from the Pentagon to build a wall that's not gonna happen. Um, the money wise is astronomical. Time wise for the wall, it's not gonna be done for a good twenty years. And construction wise, if you ask any carpenter about building a wall, some of the geographic locations, it's impossible. I mean, just look at a satellite view of the Texas-Mexico border. It as geologically, it, it's impossible. But when I hear that, <laughs> um, the one that I really liked is, uh, uh, what they call that, the charge the charge rule that if you're an immigrant and there's a chance that you might need to go on any kind of a any kind of an assistance like food stamps or any kind of medical assistance that you're not allowed to come in the country. So only the rich immigrants can come to the country. Oh yeah, that's gonna work out real well. I mean, I mean, it comes back to it, unless you're an indigenous person, you know, everyone's a, unless you're an indigenous person to this land, everyone's an immigrant, too. Unless your family is rich, you don't get to come here either. How many of us wouldn't even be born? I mean, my grandfather was dirt poor, he worked at the top. You know, everyone, every immigrant that comes here most of the time is going to be either poor or have nothing to their name. And then you build and you make your American dream come true. But that law got struck down, or well, not that law, that rule got struck down, the executive order got struck down, the tax got struck down. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you know what? I don't see him. I'm sorry, but even though all these things are happening, I don't see him leaving the White House. Well, it's, it's like it, it, it's not going to happen the way we want it. Something is wrong. Something is seriously wrong. And I can't put my finger on it. But he's either going to resign leaving Trump to hold the bag or his voters are just not going to care. America is just not going to care enough. And we may be looking at 2020. And I know that's scary. But unless we get together and we all pull at the same time, you know, put your own personal feelings aside. Do you want a thief in the White House? Or you want to try to write this shit. And because what this is doing, what this is a shape of, is a typical oligarchy government. Uh, give me what I want, or I'll push you out, and I'll buy my way into the administration I want. What separates America is that we are a country of law. You choose to follow the law because it's the right thing to do. If you break the law, there is a punishment. And he doesn't care about the law. He doesn't care about the punishment because he never was held accountable to anything or anyone. He just did what he wanted to do and Nobody ever stopped them like they are now. So, mothers, fathers, grandparents, learn to say no to your kids once in a while. It's not going to kill them. It may even build character. Look at the nut job we have now. 
Mom probably never said no to him. But anyway, that is the weekend review. <laughs> now, I found these. Moving on to the thing. I found these. And you need to see that. Yeah, they look a little bluish. Oh, that's a nice picture. But now you have the glare. <laughs> anyway. So here they are, the mystery flavors. Now I've been seeing this on YouTube lately. And I think I have an idea of what the mystery flavor may be. So what you do is that of course you have a taste. And then you go to this. Let me pull this now. Over here. You go to that address. All right there. You go to that address. And you put in what flavor you think it is. And you put in $50,000. Okay, so. Oh, I can smell these already. Oh no. I smell cinnamon. I hate cinnamon. And I smell it from here. Oh god. Oh god. Okay, I'm gonna make this as painless as possible. <laughs> Oreos, I love you. I, I love you cookies, I really do. That's almost crying. I don't know what this is. Okay, I'm just going to eat the cream. This is a fact that it dissipates the fastest. And I don't want this in my mouth any longer than it has to be. Mm. Oh dear God. Oh dear God. Oh dear God. Oh dear God. Mm. Okay. I'm not going to eat anymore because I just took a quarter taste and I can't take it. I'm going to put you over there. We're putting that in, in cookie purgatory. Someone else will have it. Okay. The flavor, I already know what it is. And I absolutely do not like it. And people are going to hate me over this. And I know you're going to hate me over this. Because there are people that love that stuff. And they go crazy for it. And I don't blame you. Because when they leave out the cinnamon, that is awesome. But that has so much cinnamon, I can smell. Those are churros. Without a doubt, those are churros. And it's supposed to be chocolate dip churros because that's why you have the chocolate cookie so if you like churros you want to get yourself some of that and I think I just blurted out the answer for the $50,000 you know what? who cares the more than marry everyone in the pool go give you a guess and I want to cut if you win okay because I know my subscribers are and I can see you so if any of my subscribers win I will be one my cut no, you, you go on baby dolls. You go and have fun. And you go and you, you know what? Of all... I don't think there was many flavors of, of Oreos I absolutely did not like. 
Um, all the cola flavor one. I'm, oh god. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't bad. It just wasn't good in there. But those, I just told you about. Okay. So, those, I want to give out a uh, shout out to Big John TV. Because I saw them on Big John TV. And I was like, oh god, I gotta be around here. Uh, his family are the cutest little family. Um, really clean, uh, wholesome videos. So you don't have to be embarrassed of what's going to say what. Unlike my channel, which I start throwing out who knows what's going to dribble out of my mouth. And I talk really serious stuff. <laughs> you don't want your kids to watch <laughs> But if they are hating us on you, I'm not a babysitter. I just talk about the questions on my mind and for you to get out your questions. So we're running up on 27 minutes. So I guess I'll just say, there for the best. Expect the worst. No. Prepare for the worst. Hope for the best. See, the cookie threw me off. It's the cinnamon. It's screwing with me. Okay, so, prepare for the worst, hope for the best. <laughs> I guarantee you. Oh my god, that cookie threw me all sorts of sideways. Mm. So, I guess, how did I used to say, come on kids, help me out here. So, prepare for the worst. Hope for the best, and I guarantee you, we're going to end up somewhere in the middle. Well, we're going to be okay, kids. I'll see you in a few days when this, uh, when this storm blows over. As you can see, it's gotten really cold where I'm at. <laughs> so, I'll see you next week. Bye!